Greetings, everyone. I hope you are well. Uh, it is a cloudy day here. Uh, maybe some rain, maybe some thunder and lightning. I don't know. We'll see. But uh, I will be with you until that happens. Um, I hope you are having a good day. <clears throat> this video finds you well. Uh, in this video, we're going to start a new unit, Unit 9. Uh, Hurrah! Yes, and to help us get started, we're going to talk about some of our unit goals for Unit 9. So, Unit 9 <clears throat> is going to be talking about maybe a topic you aren't as familiar with. Um, it's going to be talking about environmental problems. So our first goal is going to be identify environmental issues and concerns. And we will be talking more about what that means in, a, in just a little bit. We're also going to write a cause and effect paragraph about a, an environmental problem. And if you remember, cause and effect, cause is, if you remember from the cause and cause, cause is the reason why something happens, and then the effect is the result, what happens because um, of the, what happens because of an action. So if I throw the ball through the window, if I throw the ball at the window, that's a cause. What do you think the effect is going to be? It's going to go break the window, right? So the cause is the ball being thrown. The effect is the ball going through the window, right? If I pour vinegar and baking soda together, there's my cause. What is the effect? A bubbling action, right? So cause and effect. But we're going to look at a very specific uh, cause and effect paragraph about environmental problems. And again, we'll be talking more about environmental problems in a minute and throughout the unit. So if you don't have ideas about that right now, don't worry. We will make sure you are there. And then our final um, uh, unit goal is to scan a chart uh, to determine um, reasons to live green. Uh, it might be not something you think about very often, uh, but uh, in this unit, maybe you will find new reasons to live green or reasons why you should even should just think about it. Um, so uh, to help us get started, here are some questions that we can start to talk about. What does it even mean to live green? Or what is living green? To read the question from my board. Um, so if you think about the color green, what do we see out in our world often that is green? Anyone? Yes. Plants, trees, grass, right? It's all, all the life that grows uh, from the ground a lot of times is at some point green. Um, and so <clears throat> we have associated the word, uh, the color green with uh, the world around us or uh, the environment. Another way of thinking about environment is the world that is around us, right? So um, my immediate environment, um, for me personally, is my house and my yard. Um, and in my environment, there is a house, there is a pecan tree, there are, these are things I see right now, there's a pecan tree, there's a row of bushes and little bushes and grass and ivy, right? So those are examples, of, that's an example of a small environment, right? My immediate environment, what's surrounding me right now. But environment can also be all, um, <clears throat> all over the earth and all the living things in the earth um, and all those things uh, work together. Um, so uh, if there's no, we need water to grow the grass, help grow grass, um, and animals eat the grass, and then we eat the animals. Um, just as an example of how things are connected, right? So the idea of what is living green means that uh, we are choosing a way to live that uh, is good for the earth, or choosing a way that to live that protects the earth, that um, that tries to um, bring life and not destruction. So if you think about uh, maybe in, think about maybe your country, uh, how 
uh, in farms, maybe, <clears throat> if you uh, if you over farm something, if you farm too much, uh, what happens to the ground? <clears throat> it happened here in the U.S. And, excuse me. <coughs> it happened here in the U.S. in the early uh, 30s, late 20s, early 30s. Uh, it was called the Dust Bowl. What happened? The farmers would plant the same crop year after year, and it, uh, it because they did that. Uh, here's the cause. They planted the same uh, crop year after year, the same rye, corn, wheat, whatever, year after year in the same field. It used all the food that's in the soil for the plants. All that went away because the, plant, the crops, the corn, the wheat, the cotton, whatever, ate all the food that's in the ground, and then there was no more food. So you could not grow uh, plants in the soil, and so then the soil would blow away, right? That is not living green. That is overusing the earth and destroying the earth, right? So living green is thinking about how can we take care of the earth so that uh, we do not destroy it, that the earth can renew itself so that nutrients and food in the soil can be put back in the soil, as one example. Um, uh, and, uh, and so, some of the examples of that is, what do we do with trash, living green? Is what do we do with our trash? How do we use our energy, right? Um, so living green is thinking, how can I take care of the earth in a way that I am not destroying the earth, but I'm allowing the earth to renew itself, and the things that I have, the trash that I make, the electricity or the natural gas that I use or the water that I use, I do not use too much so that there will be uh, be those things later, right? So living green is thinking about how can I take care of the earth uh, uh, with the things that I use and don't need anymore and so that I do not destroy the earth but I am taking care of the earth, okay? Um, <clears throat> question number two, what are, cause, what are the causes and effects of environmental problems? So first, let's identify what are some of what are some environmental problems? If you think about, uh, for some of you, you live, your apartment is maybe by a creek, right? If you go down to the creek, there is lots of maybe trash in the creek. Many places in Dallas, if you go to White Rock Lake, uh, the creek near your apartment, or any creek, White Rock Lake Creek, or right, yeah, anyway. If you go to that creek, what do you always see? You always see trash, right? Trash in a water, in natural water, in rivers, streams, and creeks, and lakes, is a problem, right? That's an example of an environmental problem. Why is it a problem? It's not good for the fish, right? Uh, all the chemicals from the plastic and the food and the waste, it affects the fish and whatever the frogs and whatever else in the water it can uh, kill the fish it can cause uh, kill the frogs it can change the fish so maybe you get a frog with two heads or a fish with two heads or um, and when I was growing up there was a bird but that had really soft shells uh, and the shells would break before the bird could the little bird inside could grow and hatch out um, because of chemicals we were using, right? So we don't, the chemicals we use, the plastics, they can affect that fish, the animals, the life in the water, right? So that's a, the trash in the water is an example of environmental problem. Trash on the road, all the trash that we throw away, right? It has to go somewhere. What do we do with that? Um, coal. Is an, uh, uh, burning coal is an example of an environmental problem because it releases gases and those gases make the air dirty or when we drive our cars a lot it makes uh, the air dirty <clears throat> if you google um, LA right now pictures of LA up and say Google LA Los Angeles and smog you will see pictures where before the virus, before coronavirus, there are pictures where the air looks dirty, 
right? And now there are pictures uh, where the city looks clean, right? Because there's not many cars on the road and they're not producing as much gas and fumes, um, and so the air is cleaner. You can also, another example would be um, Venice in Italy. Uh, Venice is on canal, they're water canals, so little, instead of streets, they have water that go between the houses and the buildings. And because of the virus, boats aren't going into the canals, and the water is clean, right? So there are many environmental problems. And I've talked about some of the causes and the effects of those right now. So environmental problems that I've mentioned, um, pollution in the air, um, pollution uh, in the water, um, just the amount of trash that we produce and have nowhere to go, right? So those, uh, so when we throw things out the window, there's a cause. What's the effect? It goes into the river. It maybe kills the life in the river. When we drive everywhere and drive all the time, when many people are driving, um, it burns gas. It burns the gas and it creates different type of gas, but poison for the air, right? Carbon dioxide, um, and that goes up into the air and it makes it dirty. Right? So there's a cause and effect. The boats in Venice, right? <clears throat> there is another one um, that uh, because the boats are out, the boats create, pollute, add bad things to the water. They've gone away um, and they make the water dirty, but now they've gone away and made it clean. Another cause and effect that maybe we don't think about right now, there are many news stories about um, animals who are uh, coming out into the streets, coming into the cities, because people aren't, uh, aren't around as much and pushing them back, right? So they've become less scared and they've become more comfortable and they are visiting places more and they're becoming, they're able to uh, reproduce uh, more. Um, there's an example of some pandas that you can Google. Uh, just Google pandas and the coronavirus and you should find what I'm talking about. Um, and then finally, so there's some causes and effects. And then finally, what can we do to help the environment? Well, what do you think? There are some big things and some small things, right? Some small things, instead of throwing our trash out the window, because where does it go? Down into the creeks. We can hold on to it and then throw it away when we get home. Um, <clears throat> we, maybe we do not have to drive as much. Right? Many of us are not driving as much. We can maybe walk more. Um, or do we really need to go to the store at this moment? Maybe we can put that off, right? Um, or another big thing is electricity. The more electricity we use, the more coal and other uh, fuels they have to burn in order to make electricity. So the less electricity we use, maybe there's another way um, we can help because they don't have to make as much electricity, they're not burning as much, putting as many gases into the air, and it helps the air to be cleaner. Uh, and then finally, water. Water is a limited resource. Um, fresh water, is, that is. And so maybe not taking as long of showers, uh, not leaving the water running unless you, if you're not using it, right? Those are small ways we can conserve or help the environment by not overusing the things that we have, okay? So, <clears throat> our introduction into environmental problems and living green. We're now going to transition. We're going to move into uh, Unit 9 on page 110 and 111. And um, before we start, just let us get there, and here's what we're going to do. In a moment, we're going to look at the picture together, and we're going to be looking at uh, what do you see and what is happening. And remember where we started our conversation. We're, we started our conversation with <clears throat> environmental problems, identifying those problems, and thinking about causes and effects, um, and then maybe ways we can help the environment. So as we look at this picture, let's be thinking about what, <clears throat> how do these how do these pieces fit together in, in the context of this story, okay? All right, 
let's take a look at the picture together. Okay, so here's our picture. Like I said, new unit, um, trying out some new things. So here's our picture, and let's look at the picture together. What do you see in picture number one? Where do you think they are? If you ask me, it looks like they are in a science classroom. They're in a classroom, and maybe a science classroom. And why do I say that? Well, if you look along the wall, uh, you see a picture of a body with lines pointing to different body parts. Uh, and then you also see a pair of lungs, right? Um, and then in the back, on the far right side of the picture, you see uh, the model of the human with its organs. Oh, and big tip, there is a book on the desk that says biology, right? If you remember uh, from previous units, they don't put a lot of words in the pictures, but if they do put a word in the picture, you know it's important. So biology, we know this is a science class. Uh, biology, if you remember ology, the study of, bio is life, so the study of life. So, um, and the pictures along the walls fit this, okay? So we have uh, two students uh, sitting at their desks. Um, we have May, uh, who looks very interested in what the speaker is talking about, and he has an example of two different light bulbs. Uh, and so maybe for thinking about in the context of um, our, our, our unit, maybe he is comparing uh, the two light bulbs and which maybe is better for the environment. Um, and then next, uh, if you see uh, on the chalk, chalkboard, uh, we see uh, Mr. Conway, the Living Green Council. So maybe this is uh, Mr. Conway, and he is talking to the class about the living, how to live green. And the light bulbs are two example, or are one example of a way that we can live green. All right. Let's now look at picture number two. <clears throat> um, we are now out of the classroom. It looks like we are in the home. There's a washer and dryer. Uh, there are counter space with um, storage containers and books. There's a pot at the bottom of the page. There's even a dinner table, and maybe a mom and a dad. Uh, and if you look back um, into the in the back part of the picture, uh, it looks like maybe May is sitting at her computer, uh, and she is uh, maybe doing some research on her computer, right? Um, <clears throat> looks, it also looks like um, maybe uh, the mom is talking to May, trying to get her attention. Um, and if you look at the dad, he does not really look happy, does he? Uh, he looks kind of upset. Um, so. Uh, maybe he is, and he's looking at May. So maybe he is not happy about what May is doing, or not doing. Um, so, uh, <clears throat> so how do we put these two pictures together? Uh, maybe May having uh, remembers what they talked about in class and is now at home and looking up on the internet, researching on the internet um, what she learned about in class. Okay. That's what I see and how I see putting together. Um, now, let's listen and see what the story is actually about. Daily Living, page 111, exercises 2A and 2B. May, dinner. I'll be right there. Sorry I'm late. I was just checking something on the computer. Okay, sit down. We've been waiting for you. I know. I'm sorry, but I was looking at the website for this great organization called the Living Green Council. Living Green? What does that mean? I don't even like that color. Dad, it means taking responsibility for saving the Earth. Saving it from what? From global warming. We had a guest speaker today in biology class, and he mentioned a whole bunch of stuff. 
simple steps we can take to reduce our energy use and protect the environment. Like what? Okay. Well, first of all, he said we need to cut down on driving. So we should walk, ride a bicycle, carpool, or take public transportation. I'd do those things if I could. But my job is an hour away, and there's no bus service that goes there. And there's nobody for me to carpool with. I see your point. But how about recycling? I think we could do a better job of recycling bottles, cans, glass, paper. You're right. We could do that if we tried. Another idea was to turn off unnecessary lights. Look at this house. Lights on in every room. I like that idea. It'll help cut down on the electric bill. What else did the speaker suggest? Let me think. Um, oh, he said that we should wash our clothes in cold water. Really? I'm not sure the clothes will get clean, but I suppose we can try. That'll save money on the electric bill, too. But isn't our washing machine really old? If we bought a new one that's more energy efficient, it could help the environment and our electric bill. I don't think we can afford to buy new appliances right now. Okay. But what about energy efficient light bulbs? We could switch to those, right? That sounds pretty simple, May. Cool. I have to say, I love your enthusiasm. I never realized how simple it can be to, uh, what did you call it? Live green? Yeah. The speaker said that if everyone did even one of these things every day, it would do a lot to reduce global warming. Speaking of warming, can we eat before the food gets cold? <laughs> <laughs> okay, now that we've listened, let's talk about who are the speakers. <clears throat> uh, we, uh, first, we hear uh, May's mother. Uh, we hear May. We also hear May's Father. If you think back to the picture, who do we not hear from? We don't actually hear from Mr. Conway, right? The, the story that we, that we listen to is only between May, her mom, and her dad, right? <clears throat> so this is who is speaking. What are they talking about? <coughs> so May is... Uh, so what is the setting? What are where is the story taking place before we talk about what they're talking about? Where is it taking place? The story is taking place at home, and what time? The time is right before dinner, right? So their uh, May's mom and dad, their mo her mother and father, are ready are sitting down for about to sit down for dinner, or or are sitting down for dinner, and May is not with them, and her mom calls to her and asks her uh, what she is doing, and May um, then tells about the, the man who came, Mr. Conway, who came and spoke to her class and told them about different ways they can live green. And then um, Ms. Ms. Uh, May goes, uh, talks about the different ways that Mr. Conway told them that they can um, practice living green in their own homes. And there's a list of different things that they could do uh, to live green. Okay, so we're going to, I want you to listen to the story again, and on page 111, there is a chart that I want you to look at. Okay, here is a picture of page 111. So uh, I want you to listen to the story again, and this time I want you to listen for ideas for how May and her family can live green. Uh, so for the first example they give you, cut down on driving. And then for option number, uh, you also will be listening for, will the family try this option, right? So the first idea was cut down on driving. Will the family try this? The answer was no, right? So I, I want you to listen one more time, and this time, uh, listen for five more uh, ways or ideas for living green and also will the family try this idea, okay? 
and when you come back, we will go over the answers together. All right, I'll talk to you in just a second. Daily Living, page 111, exercises 2A and 2B. May, dinner. I'll be right there. Sorry I'm late. I was just checking something on the computer. Okay, sit down. We've been waiting for you. I know. I'm sorry, but I was looking at the website for this great organization called the Living Green Council. Living Green? What does that mean? I don't even like that color. Dad, it means taking responsibility for saving the Earth. Saving it from what? From global warming. We had a guest speaker today in biology class, and he mentioned a whole bunch of stuff. Simple steps we can take to reduce our energy use and protect the environment. Like what? Okay. Well, first of all, he said we need to cut down on driving. So we should walk, ride a bicycle, carpool, or take public transportation. I'd do those things if I could. But my job is an hour away, and there's no bus service that goes there. And there's nobody for me to carpool with. I see your point. But how about recycling? I think we could do a better job of recycling bottles, cans, glass, paper. You're right. We could do that if we tried. Another idea was to turn off unnecessary lights. Look at this house. Lights on in every room. I like that idea. It'll help cut down on the electric bill. What else did the speaker suggest? Let me think. Um... Oh! Oh! He said that we should wash our clothes in cold water. Really? I'm not sure the clothes will get clean, but I suppose we can try. That'll save money on the electric bill, too. But isn't our washing machine really old? If we bought a new one that's more energy efficient, it could help the environment and our electric bill. I don't think we can afford to buy new appliances right now. Okay. But what about energy-efficient light bulbs? We can switch to those, right? That sounds pretty simple, May. Cool. I have to say, I love your enthusiasm. I never realized how simple it can be to, uh, what did you call it? Live green? Yeah. The speaker said that if everyone did even one of these things every day, it would do a lot to reduce global warming. Speaking of warming, can we eat before the food gets cold? <laughs> Okay, now that you've had an opportunity to listen to the story uh, and listen for ideas for Living Green that they discussed, let's now go over those answers, okay? So, what was the second idea for Living Green? It was, it is, it was recycling bottles, cans, glass, and paper. Will the family try this? Yes. Right. What is the next idea? Turn off unnecessary Will the family try this? Yes. Number four. Wash <clears throat> clothes in cold water. There is done. No. Oh, yes. Sorry. Just kidding. <clears throat> yes. If you remember, the mom said 
She does not think the clothes will get quite as clean, but she said she was willing to try it. <clears throat> Number five. By Buy a, an energy efficient washing machine, and will they try this? No. Why? Well, maybe you do, maybe you don't have the money to purchase a new washing machine, right? Washing machines, dryers, dishwashers, they're expensive, right? And we can't, not all of us, I don't, have money that I can go out and just buy a new washing machine, or dryer, or dishwasher. So like us, this is not always a practical thing that we can do, right? But it is an idea. And then our last and final um, switch to energy efficient. Answer is yes. So <clears throat> one thing you'll notice, so like things like switch to energy efficient light bulbs and turning off unnecessary lights, those are actually things that um, benefit the environment and also benefit us because we will actually save money on some of those things. Um, so some of these things, some of these ideas serve both us and the environment. Um, so. Good. I hope that was uh, good for you. And you might be thinking, teacher, what does energy efficient mean? Well, I'm glad you asked. Uh, we're actually going to talk about that word and several others for our next uh, exercise, which comes in the page, middle of page 111 uh, in section part three. Section three, part A, you're going to read and complete the story. But before we do that, let's talk about those words. <clears throat> Our first word is appliance, appliances, <clears throat> and appliances are like electronics, but uh, they are uh, devices that we use to complete household tasks, right? So if you think about what are the, um, the electronics in your, uh, in your kitchen are examples of appliances, right? They, they are devices in our homes that help our homes to run and help us to um, do the jobs in our homes. A lot of times it's things in the kitchen, like the refrigerator, or <clears throat> if you have a mixer, right, that um, has a handle and then has two heads and it spins like that, or a blender, or some kind of other mixer, or a microwave, or a toaster oven. Those are examples of appliances. <clears throat> um, our next word is carpool. That means to share a ride, right? Instead of, so in a carpool, instead of having, if me and Bob are going to the same place and we live next door, instead of Bob and me both driving our car, each of us driving our car to the same place, so that's two people, two cars, going to the same place, 
a carpool would be Bob and I ride in the same car and go to the same place. So that is carpool, right? It's sharing a ride to get to the same place. <clears throat> um, if you live in a, an apartment complex and you come to English class, uh, maybe in the fall, and you and someone from your apartment are both coming to the uh, English class and you ride together, you are in a carpool. You are carpooling, right? You're sharing a ride together to get to the same place. Our next word is cut down on. And that simply means to reduce, use, less of. To reduce or use less of is to cut down. <clears throat> All right, here's the word I mentioned earlier. Energy efficient means to use energy with little or no waste. If you think about it in terms of a car, you want an uh, energy efficient car. You want a car with good gas mileage, right? Because you want a car that does not need as much gas to go further, right? That's energy efficient. Because the car is not using a lot of gas to go short distance, it's using a small, small amount of gas to go a long distance. So something that is energy efficient um, only uses a little bit of energy to do its job does not use lots and lots and lots of energy, right? Um, <clears throat> so an older appliance that uh, maybe the engine, the motor is old, and uh, maybe it needs more energy to get it going because it has been used many, many times and it needs more energy to go. Kind of like, think like the body. Um, for those of us who are, are a little older, it takes a little longer for it to get going, right? We need more energy to get moving maybe in the morning. But an energy efficient person, they don't need quite as much energy and they can just get going, right? So um, if you think about appliances in the same way, the older something gets, the more energy it needs to get moving. And so it uses more energy. Um, and that's not energy efficient because there are thing, uh, appliances that can use just a little bit of energy and do the same job. So we want to use energy efficient to uh, use energy with little or no waste because uh, that means we're not over, we're not using things, resources that cause pollution and using up resources, right? So we want energy efficient, things that uh, use little or waste, waste little or no energy, right? Or another way, use it wisely. Um, use without waste. All right. <clears throat> we talked about this word in the beginning. Um, it's the world surrounding you. A lot of times we mean this to be nature. So plants, trees, the air, the water. We talk about those things being in the environment, but they all are around us and they work together uh, for us. <clears throat> and we are part of it. Our global warming. Is the idea that the average temperatures of Earth are rising, or they're getting hotter. So it's the idea, global warming is the idea that uh, the Earth temperature, the average Earth temperatures are going up. So maybe 10 years ago, summers in Dallas were 95 degrees. 10 years later, or 30, 
things make it better. Maybe 30 years ago, temperature, average temperature in Dallas in the summer was 95. And then 30 years later, it's now 100, right? So the idea of global warming is that the temperatures are rising, average temperatures are rising. Um, and the, what is the, that's the effect, and what is the cause? Is the cause, many people think, is that pollution, uh, us throwing away, um, thing, throwing away a lot of things, using a lot of gas, uh, using a lot of electricity, is causing, we are causing the earth to heat up. That's the idea of global warming. <clears throat> We can talk more about that later. Recycle. Uh, it means to use, again, remember our prefix re, re means again. Um, so we're going to use again. We're going to put it cycle, uh, is like a circle, right? Like a bicycle, two circles. So if we're going to recycle, we're going to put it back into the cycle for it to be used again. Uh, a lot of times we can throw our plastic bottles or our tin cans into a recycle bin and they will go and then they will be broken down and made again into new bottles, new cans, or maybe even clothing, right? So that's the <clears throat> that's the idea of recycle. We're using trash again to make new things. And then <coughs> our last word is responsibility. And responsibility is what you are Required or supposed supposed to do. Hopefully you remember required, but responsibility is what you are required or supposed to do. Um, many of us are parents. We are responsible for our children. We are. We have many jobs and tasks that we are supposed to do and we are required to do to take care of our children, right? They are a responsibility. If we don't do it, no one else will. Um, we, we, we have been given the job, the task of taking care of them, so it's our responsibility. It's uh, what we are supposed to do and required to do, okay? So using those words, <clears throat> I want you to complete the paragraph in purple at the bottom of page 111, and uh, you'll use each word one time to fill in the blanks. Um, and when we come back, I will. Uh, I want you when we break. I want you to go ahead and complete the paragraph. And when we come back, we will uh, listen uh, to the answers, and then uh, I will read it, and then I'll go over the answers. Uh, well, I won't read it actually. I'll play it for you, and then you can check your answers, and then, <clears throat> uh, then I will go over the answers with you as well. Okay, so pause now, answer the questions, and then when we come back, we'll listen to the answers together. Page 111, exercise 3A. May was late to dinner because she was looking at the website of the Living Green Council. Living green means taking responsibility for saving the earth from global warming. May tells her parents about the guest speaker who came to her class. The speaker suggested simple things people could do to reduce their energy use and protect the environment. For example, they could carpool instead of driving alone, recycle their bottles and cans, and use energy-efficient light bulbs. May's parents agree that it is important to cut down on energy use since it would also help them save money. However, they can't afford to buy new appliances right now. Okay, now that you've listened to the story read aloud, uh, let's go over the answers together. I'll read and then answer as we go along. So, 
May was late to dinner because she was looking at the website of the Living Green Council. Living Green means taking responsibility for saving the earth from number two global warming. Again, this is the idea that man is causing the world to the earth to the temperatures to rise uh, because of pollution, because of um, the gases we burn through our cars and by making electricity. Number three, we'll get there. May tells her parents about the guest speaker who came to her class. The speaker suggested simple things people could do to re reduce their energy use and protect the environment. Environment is the thing that the life around us, the, the earth around us, the, the trees, the air, the grass, the plants, the animals, all that is the environment. <clears throat> For example, they could blank instead of driving alone. What's the opposite of driving alone? It's riding together with someone. So that is carpool. Uh, blank their bottles and cans. Recycle, so use again our uh, cans and bottles. And use blank light bulbs. So if you remember, we're going to use energy Efficient energy efficient light bulbs, which means light bulbs that do not use as much energy. <clears throat> May's parents agree that it is important to blank energy use. It could it would also help them save money. So the idea is how do you save money? You want to use things less, so we're going to cut down. And finally, however, they can't afford to buy new blank right now. What are things they would have to buy? Maybe an energy efficient washing machine. And a washing machine is an example of appliance. So, there you go. Great work today. Uh, I hope this has been helpful for you. Uh, maybe I uh, introducing or teaching you some new ideas about uh, environmental problems. Uh, I'm excited about to talk to you more about those as we get uh, further into the unit. And we'll see you at the next video. Take care, and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.